Hello, and welcome to Cry Havoc Wargaming, dedicated to bringing you the uncommon. For those of you who haven't met me, my name is Ron, and today we're going to do an after-action report of the 10th episode of our China Station campaign for Pulp Alley. This is The Fog. So for this episode, we have our heroes, uh, the Explorers Club and the crew of the SS Venture back in China Station, where they're endeavoring to stop Dagon from arising through a perilous fog. For this particular adventure, there is a fog that is slowly increasing coming into the uh, center of the table. The game is six turns along. Uh, at the end of six turns, the entire table will be under that fog. There are only four plot markers actually on the table when the game begins. Shrines to Cassiloid creatures and odd shrines that have to be taken and destroyed. Uh, once that's occurred, once all of those have been dealt with, then a gong will show up in some random location on the table and that will be the major plot point, the fifth plot point. So we have six turns to complete this to get all five of the plot points and therefore save China Station. Let's go to the gaming table. So here is China Station for today's game, the final game of our China Station campaign. This scenario is designed for one to four players and may be played solo versus or co-op. We're going to be playing it co-op today. It only uses half of a roster, so we've each picked half of our characters. So we each have three characters that we're involving in this game. A mysterious glowing fog is engulfing China Station. Can you survive the horrors and solve the mystery of the deadly fog before you succumb to raving madness? Deployment zones are the sides within six inches. It is a term limit six game. Uh, there are five rewards cards. Uh, and the special rules we're using are horror. We'll be using the horror cards. Non-player characters, those are the denizens themselves. Uh, dark and dangerous. But what that means is that the entire table, except for in the fog, is a difficult area, uh, but line of sight is also limited to 12 inches. If you were within the glowing fog, it is a perilous area, and the glowing fog is going to keep increasing. The table will be more and more in the fog as the game goes on. Uh, we have uh, 10 scenario cards for this scenario. They're near the table. Each turn, when a player activates their first character, they will have to draw one of those scenario cards randomly. These are no drop rewards, so when you take a reward for a plot point, it doesn't matter if you get dropped later. The card doesn't go back on, it doesn't go on the ground, because you're not actually getting an item. You're getting the blessings or whatever of an ancestral spirit, so it's not something you can actually drop. So that's a little different than a normal game. Scenario setup. So, resources. Uh, we get to decide if we're going to spend any of our resources on this game. This may be a way of cheating. Because if you have backup, that's people. I think I may use a backup. Yeah, I'm going to buy a level one shooter. And that's one point. Yeah. I think I may do the same then. Okay, that's why I put the card where I did. Or do you want to spend any other resources? Do you want to get gear or use your contact? No, and um, I only have one gear, so I think I'll carry it to next time when we're out the, in the um, jungles of the perilous islands. So we need to roll a d10 for our pre-game situation. Right. I got nine. I have no effect. One. Uh, delayed. One of your characters selected at random 
cannot be deployed until turn two. Singapore Smith is not there yet. Yeah, we're just going to use the yellow tokens for the plot okay. points. The plot points are at 15 inches each from in from each corner. Uh, we roll a d6 to see who starts as director. And deployment, each of us selects one table edge and deploys the characters within six inches of that edge, one league per edge. So you pick an edge, mm -hmm. and then you're six inches in from that edge. We'll be here. Be over six inches away from any plot point, too. Uh, That's probably, probably fine. Yes. But he'll be over here then, so he won't get any closer. So that means this is my edge. Okay. You know. Mm. We rarely use horror cards, so let's go through a reminder real quickly of when we pull them. Mm -hmm. Horror check. When do I roll for a horror check? I don't know. That's why I'm checking <laughs> the book. When you activate or move within 12 inches of a horrific enemy, that's the one I think we meant, mm. of equal or higher level, um, which is where we may not have broken it because it may have only happened with Singapore in the last game, who is higher level than any of them. Note, you do not roll more than one horror check in a turn due to activating or moving near horrific enemies. Whenever a horrific enemy of equal or higher level moves in contact with you, you do a horror check. And when you move into contact with a horrific encounter, peril, plot point, and so on, note, you do not roll a horror check due to activating in contact with a horrific encounter. For a horror check, you roll one die equal to your current health die type. You pass the check by rolling one success. Note, this roll is not a health check. Uh, you either pass or you fail. At the end of each turn, you have the option to roll a d6 recovery for each character for one or more horror effects. Uh, if you roll, you may remove one card. Uh, it is an additional to the health recovery, so it's not as in place of. You have a director. Uh, actually, let's, first thing we have to do is we have to each pull, you pull three fortune cards. Okay. All right, so now we get to pull for the start of the turn. It's the first turn of the game. You have a cone, so you get to decide. I'm going to move Reese towards the objective there. What you should have done, though, is pull the scenario card first, because you just activated your first character. So the okay. first thing you're supposed to do is pull a scenario card, the yellow ones. Okay. I encounter a hostile denizen. One level two denizen in contact with this character and resolve the fight. Now, technically, I have to do a horror, though. All right, uh, go ahead and roll your health check, which is basic, uh, I mean, your horror check, which is basically a health roll. All right, so that's 1d8. Nope. You don't make it. Fish. So you pull a horror card. Okay. So what did the card say? It's right. madness. You must discard one fortune card when you activate this yes. character. You don't have to do it now. Okay. Uh, if you cannot discard, then the opponent takes control of this character. Okay. As if it was one of their own. So I have to fight this. But guy. you do have to fight him. He's only he looks worse than he is. I don't. All of my second level denizens are out there. Four d eight, and I can add one die to brawl because I'm fierce. Mm -hmm. Wow. So he gets uh, two fives. Okay. I get. Whoa! All five are over. So all five of your hit. Um, so you take two hits, or have to roll health, two healths, mm -hmm. and he has to roll five healths. He's got d6s. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Damn. You made them all. Oh my god. It's, it is, I didn't make any of them. I didn't make any of them. Um, so your, your health drops down by one. I guess we'll do Reese. I guess he's going to come in. You could brawl. And brawl. No. Um, he is within six, so we're good. I have to do a horror first, right? Huh? When you activate it, were you within 12 inches? Oh, of it? Uh, yes. Okay, so you had to do one then. Okay. He is a 1d6. Nope. All right, so, he's, so he didn't charge in. He should, he, okay. He, and you pull the horror card. I cannot brawl. Okay. Sense of calm. I actually get a, would have gotten a plus for shooting. I gotta pull one of these before I activate. Small pocket of glowing fog, three inch diameter, centered on the character and immediately draw a random peril. 
Um, that's not good because that's where all of my people are. I have to take a random peril. Random peril. I have, oh, that's only one might. I can probably do that. Mites are 2d8. Maybe I can't. No problem. So that's gone. I think that probably counted as my activating for him. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and move him out of the fog to there. Uh, that's going to be close range. Uh, close range gets plus one bonus if you're within six. Inglehorn. Inglehorn first is fastest is first peril, so I didn't even have to roll that. Mm -hmm. Targets receive a negative one dodge. Dodge and cunning are not lowered with it. Okay, well he's gonna dodge. That's what he's gonna do because he can't he can't shoot back. I need you to roll two d six for the dodge, and I'm shooting. I have three d ten. Oops. They only should have rolled 1d6 for dodge. Mm -hmm. Well, they got the same number same anyway, number, so, so that works well. Three's a miss. They could stop the four, so they get hit with one. So he has to roll a d6, and he's down. One of the wow. is out. Uh, I am now the director, and I think I will keep activating. Now that I've cleared a path, they're in a perilous area because they're in the fog, so they're all going to have to... Activate with a with a peril. I'm going to ask Jude Driscoll first. Uh, I have two might or finesse. Two might or finesse with Driscoll. That's going to be rough on her. Oh, what's her finesse? Yeah, her finesse is better. But she didn't get it. So that's two two hits. So she has to roll. Uh, two health rolls, uh, and she didn't get one of those, so she drops from D8 to D6. She is wounded. I guess I might as well go ahead and try to do Ben Hayes. He probably can't even do that. Uh, two might or finesse. Yeah, he can't even do it, so he's going to roll two. This could kill him. Wow. He made his, though. But he failed his peril roll, so he doesn't get to activate. The shooter is outside that range. So I'm going to go ahead and move the shooter. And get him away from that fog. Um, get him in there. That's all of mine moved. The only one I have left is that shooter. And I'm thinking he should get out of this area if he can. But of course he has to roll, he has to pull a horror first because he's within 12 of the... He has a minus D shoot, minus D brawl, minus D dodge, and he cannot run. But... Minus D? Oh, I see what you're saying. Loses a dice. Because he failed his horror roll? Oh, he didn't roll, he just pulled. Yeah, you need a health roll first. Yeah, maybe he didn't really. No, nope. no, he got it. He got it. <laughs> okay. He is, however, he can walk. It appears, mm -hmm. and he is going to just try and move out of the way. He's going to shoot. So what he, the, heck? the guy in the water is going to try to dodge. dodge. Okay, so he's going to shoot one die. Um, no, he's going to get it. Probably. Kind of has to. Yeah, yep, he certainly did. So recovery rolls are D6s. That's a mistake I've always made in this game, apparently. Recovery rolls are apparently always D6s, mm. no matter what your rank are. So you want to do that for anybody who's wounded. I'm going to roll for Driscoll, who is wounded. Uh, she does not get it, so she's still wounded. And then, do you have any wounded? I do. Archer. He got it. All right. So he can pull the wound off. Right. He can also roll one... Anybody who has horror on them can try yes. can do one roll for horror as well. Uh -huh. If they have multiple horrors, they can only remove one with okay. their success. But I have one horror each on Archer and Reese and my shooter guy. No, Archer does not get it. Reese does. And a shooter guy has one also. So let's try this for shooter guy. No. It was a All right. We skipped their movement. Oh, yes. If they see somebody in line of sight, they'll go to them. If they don't, they go six inches towards the center. So plop, 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 plop. Poop. Uh, but 
this one's got stuff in line of sight. Yep. Great. That Two one's in, in a fight. Down. No, he probably has us because this is just a tent. Mm. So now it is turn uh, two, so we take one of these. Okay, and Singapore can join them now. Yep. Six. Forgot. Let's move the fog too. Oh. Yeah, it moves three inches inward. Mm. There we are. I go ahead and move Englehorn. Um, actually, move all the way up there. I have to take a peril to do that. One cunning. He can probably. Oh, he autos fast. Your first peril you encounter each turn. He doesn't even have to take. That's it. right. Right. I'm gonna go ahead and send Shooter Boy over here, which is probably say, sacrificing him. But what the heck? Oh yeah, he's perfect one to do that. The shoot is 2d6. Can we roll a dodge for the critter? His dodge is uh, 2d6. I have one hit with only a four, so he'll probably die. No? Oh, uh, yeah, he does. Yeah, he does. So he can move an inch in some direction. He can move a little closer. So I move the shooter, Englehorn. I'm going to go ahead and move Driscoll, but she has to. But she's in that fog. Mm -hmm. Let's take one of these first. She's got two finesse or cunning. Uh, finesse is her better one. But again, she doesn't make it because they're killing her. She has to roll. Now she's at 66s. She has to roll two to sixes. She, yep. she takes another hit. She's knocked out. That's stupid fog. Oh my god. Uh, and Ben Hayes has to do the same thing. One finesse or cunning, at least it's possible. And they're both the same. So it doesn't really matter. And he fails. So he's going to have to roll a household. He is knocked out. I, I may have lost my whole team. <laughs> oh my God. Your turn. You go ahead and move people. So I'm assuming Singapore Smith comes in at same the though. same. Yeah. So six inches from the. Yeah. Which puts her right in the fog, basically. Right, so she's going to. So, she's probably 12 inches from a critter, too. Yes. So she has to... Oh, oh, oh. I forgot the scenario. Did I pull a scenario card? I thought you did. I don't think oh, I did. you didn't pull a scenario. You pulled a... Weird creatures are coming through the tunnel. <laughs> Place one level two denizen 2d6 from the center of the table in a random direction. Mm. So 2d6. Six inches. Uh, two inches that way. So now she is in a brawl, unfortunately, which is not her best. I really wanted to shoot this guy. All right, 3d8. God, I'm so good at shooting. It's 3d6. Okay. There was another one right there. He's got two hits. Yeah. She gets one hit. All right. You only hit him once, you said, right? Yes. But he fails. Uh, so you have the director come because you just want to fight. So I guess it's going to be Archer fighting the one he's already in contact with. I'm just going to fight. Okay. He is going to do 4d8 for the brawl and 5d8 because he's fierce. Let's see if I can bring this sucker down. No, it doesn't I, matter. They were all fails. Oh. All right. One. Only one. All right, but he couldn't block anything, so he's gone. So he has to roll a hit, okay. a health roll, and he fails that, so he's gone. Yes. Reese is in the fog. He is going to have to do a peril. He rolls one success with might. His might is one d six. He fails. That's it. And he only had the one hit, so he is down. And Shooter Guy. Yeah. Well, Shooter Guy is definitely within the 12 inches for the horror. That's not good. So he is going to roll a 1d6. But he makes it. All right, good. 
And he's going to try and pick up that plot point. He's not going to shoot the creature right behind oh. beside him? Okay, that's a good idea. It's, better. Yeah, let's it's a better point because he's, You're right. he'll probably kill himself picking up a plot point. You're right. He probably <laughs> will, and he's so close. Yeah, so, so he's actually going to get bonus. Really? Um, yeah, because he's in close range. That's uh, close range plus one. That's an extra die. One. All right, so that's a hit. And he but makes, he makes his roll. Damn. We've got recovery rolls to make. We do uh, Driscoll. Driscoll's gone. Wow. Driscoll's gone. I got to do a recovery roll for Ben Hayes. Ben Hayes is gone. Wow. And so now most of my group, like I was saying, is in fact, right. I have one guy. I'm going to do Reese. And he's gone. I can roll for that madness card, right? So we're rolling for that on Archer, and he makes it. So that oh, is that goes gone. Card. That's gone. Slam into him. Bang. This one's going to come down towards him. This one's going to come down him. Uh, he's closest to him. Yeah, it's probably him. I would say. So we got a lot of fights. You roll 3d6 for the Dagon, and I'll roll 1d6. Miss. Great. He's pro I probably just lost my shooter. Okay. I did. So I have to roll a health roll. Nope. Yeah, shooter's gone. My shooter. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'll roll. Uh, they're 3d6 to hits. What's your shooter? Shooter's 1d6 for brawling. I got one hit. I got nothing. So you have to roll one saving, one health. Nothing. He's gone. All right. He's gone. Fog's going to move another three inches. Okay. This is a rough game. And we're in it. Take a card. All right. So you have the cone. Uh, Singapore is... No, the very first thing if, is when you first activate anybody, oh, scenario. they have to do a scenario card. Scenario. You're right. Take two more scenario cards. Oh, horror, gruesome corpse. Horror check. And a level three denizen. Well, your, your health. Which is an eight. No, a ten. I'm sorry. Yep, made it. Uh, that's not a problem. Okay. The second is denizen level three. That is him. Where does he show up? A 2d6 from the center of the table in a random direction. So, the center. So, seven inches. And let's, these are better pointers. Three inches. Or seven inches away. this way. So, probably somewhere on here. No, in the water. So, she's dealt with the fog. All right. She is going to shoot the bad guy. She has 3d10. And she can re-roll a shoot. Probably would. Three D ten. He dodges. It doesn't matter. He fails both his rolls. His dodges. Ooh, three. No, you do not. Uh, you also should have had a four, an extra ten because she's it's within six inches of you. Oh, okay. So four. Four. So he's gonna roll four health rolls, which I'm sure he's gonna miss one. He did, so he's gone. Reese. Yeah. He's going to resolve the fog. Yeah. I am going to switch to this that says before rolling for a challenge, I can replace the challenge with the challenge on this card, which is one mm -hmm. might finesse or cunning. And I'm going to use that. So I'm a might, I have 3d8. I got one. I mean, you need just one. one. All right, yes. so you're fine. Okay, now I'm going to go over towards that plot point. Yep. I think I'm going to be. I don't know if I'm going to make it a six, though. Nope. Well, yes. Yes, I am. I feel his, his base there. It just was six. And I am going to Play good. reveal it. I plot points are all parallel zeros. You have to do a peril, then you do the plot point. Okay, it's so unlikely he's going to get all of these when he's not that high ranking, but we're going to give it our best shot. One might finesse or cunning. We might make this. Might again. 3d10, might make it, made it, made it with two. So then the plot point itself. Okay, so come on. This will actually take it. Too cunning. You can do it, and then you can't. 
Oh, right, well. So, yes, yeah, so we're all two health balls. takes two. He made it. This is my first activation. So I have to pull scenario card first. Horror on the edge. Something in the fog is creeping closer. The player character nearest to the center of the table must roll a horror check. Who the heck is sit closest to the center of the table? It's me. He has to make a horror check. Uh, D6. Yes. Okay. I do not have to make a horror check because I'm outrank any of the baddies. I do have to do a peril to try to get that plot point. I avoid my first peril because my danger sense. I'm going to now play the plot point itself and it's only one cunning. I could probably do yes, that. Hopefully. 3d10. Yeah, I think it's pretty likely. Yep. Two successes. Only need one. I get a reward and that plot point is gone. Wow. The creature's going to move. Splish splash. I was taking a bath. He can't get up though. He can't get up, but they're coming for me. This guy's coming oh, for me. Oh, forgot about him. Fogs are going to move three more inches. Damn fogs. The fog is why the game is only t six turns long. Yeah, because at some point it would kind of overwhelm everything. It'll, yeah, it'll, it'll cover the board. And my other point over here is about to go into it. Actually, I'm about to go into it. Comes in 2d6 from the tenor of the table. I have this, but I ignore my first one. So I can ignore the fog one. All right, I guess I'm going to have to do this. I'm going to move. Pop, 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 pop. Um, I'm going to move along here. I'm just going to be right back in the fog if I didn't keep moving. But I'm going to. Um, I want to move to here. I think that removes my ability to shoot, really. So I'm just going to keep moving. I'll have to do a peril. And move twice. Right. My uh, two challenges might or finesse. His finesse is 2 8. His might, they're either, either of them are 2 d 8. That's a little dangerous. I thought his might would but be stronger. It. All right, he's okay. That's the end of my turn. Uh, you go. A Lowell Archer should try to bog. Okay, the first thing he has to do is take a scenario card. Right. Nearest the center of the table encounters a random peril. That would be me. Two successes with my. Man, 3d8. He makes that, uh -huh. so I guess he has to deal with a horror because he's within 12 inches of that guy. First, we're gonna roll for a horror. Nope, he's okay, he's uh -huh. seen that thing before. Now he's gonna try and go for that. All right, so he has to do a peril. One might. He can probably do that. I hope so. Come on, come on, we need that. Yes. All right, so now he has to choose the actual plot point. Two might finesse or cunning. Okay, we're gonna do this again. A little harder. Come on, possible. come on, might's your strongest. Got Makes it. it. All right, pull a reward card. Once per turn, you may discard one fortune card to re-roll a cunning or might. That's good, yeah. that's really good. Oh, and at the end of the game, I get a gear and a backup. Yep. Okay. All right. So you've got a plot. We've got two plots down. We've got two turns okay. to get two more and deal with the third, which just seems really unlikely to me. I still have her. Mm -hmm. All right. I could try and shoot that thing, but you know, I'm not going to. Okay, but you're in the fog, so you I'm have to do fog. a peril. I know. First thing, uh, two, cunning or might. Cunning is 2d10. Okay, I got it. All right, All right, so I can move from the fog. And she doesn't need horror, so she is going to head towards that. So if she runs, she has to do another peril, right? Yes, but she can probably pass it. All right, she I'm going to try to run. She is the hero. She I'm going to uh, try to run. The leader. The leader has the best stats. Two finesse or cunning. All right, so 3d10, and I can re-roll a finesse. And I make it. Okay, critters. I think the critter's coming up here. Five. Pull a fortune card. Now I pull a scenario card. Glowing fog. Glowing fog suddenly envelops you. Uh, I have to take an immediate peril. Two might. I can probably do that. Up. Uh, oh, I ignore my first peril. I can definitely do that. So that's for the fog. Right. Or, uh, wrapping right. around me. So now I have to do the peril for the plot point. I have, unfortunately, this is a three might mm -hmm. finesse or cunning. It's going to have to be cunning. It's the only one I can make it. Okay. I have 3d10. 
Okay, so I need to I need all three of these to be successful. You can do it. He can do it. He's tough. They're all three successful. Yes, he's tough. So I've made the peril. Now I have to play the plot itself. That's about as hard as it's gonna get for me though. Uh, two finesses. Uh, my finesse is only 2d8, so that's not great. Got it. So I've taken that plot point. We have taken three of them. That's amazing. I may discard one fortune card to reroll a recovery check. Excellent. Uh, as long as I have this plot point, and plot points are undroppable in this uh, scenario. Excellent. I think Archer is going to have to deal with the, the creature, obviously, which is on top of him. First, I have to take a scenario because he's my first character. Is he in the fog? I'm not clear on where that yes, fog he is. Yes, the fog has right. gone past him. Right. Roll a horror check for this character. Nope. This character cannot move if an enemy is within line of sight. Does that mean he can't brawl if he's against him? No, it means him? he can't move. Okay. We're still going to brawl. Mm -hmm. So, All right. the big one. What is the big one's uh, brawl? 4d8. All right, I'm 48 plus one. So he's got three hits. And I've got four hits. All right, so he has to roll four health. His health is D8. And I roll... Uh, what did I say, two? Did you say two or three? I think he said three. All right, three then. Uh, but he passed two of us, but he failed two, so he's gone. I passed one. But you failed the others? Yes. So you take one one hit. hit. Okay. You want to fight, so you're the, you get this. Oh, okay. She's going to head over there. She's got to move more than once, so she's got to do the peril thing. So she's there. Yeah. Peril. Three successes. My finesse are cunning. I want to see... If there's anything that I can do with these, no, unfortunately not. But I can re-roll for my reward. Uh, when holding this plot point, once per turn, you may discard one fortune card to re-roll a cunning or might. So let's see which she's best at. I'm going to just go with finesse, so I'm not using this. Nope. So, for, so you take, you have to roll the health for, and oh. what was it, three? It was three? For three, yeah. yeah. Uh, which is D10s. Nope. I fail. So she takes a hit. One's going to come on me. Okay. However, this first one, the one that's closest to you, when yeah. he activates... When an enemy attempts any action, it it's cancelled? Yeah, you can do that. Alright, when you do that, yeah. that's a fortune card, I'm going to play Rabbit's Foot. When an opponent plays a fortune effect, effect, pick one. I can either cancel your effect, or I can draw two cards after the effect is resolved. So your effect goes into effect, right? but I get two, two cards. Good, good. Maybe something better, or even better. So the first one doesn't move. Then when the next, uh, so when the next set, this is this one, this is when you just stop from acting, right? Mm -hmm. So when this guy's going to go, I'm going to play this card. When the enemy activates, the enemy may not move more than three inches during this activation. Okay. So he Thank only gets you. to there. That's good. Does he stay the direction he's been looking or does he... I think he's going to go the way he's looking. Okay. Moves. Fog is pretty much all over I the table. The Last turn of the game. Uh, unless we get a turn that... It's, it's something that extends the turn, which should be out there. All right. Maybe out there. I'm going to take a scenario. Draw two additional scenario cards. Resolve no. them both. No. No. Corpse again? Oh, the player character near the center of the table, which I guess is, let's say that'd be him. Yeah, it's probably him. All right, he does a horror check and she does a horror check. All right. So for her, it's a D8. Yeah, we should have pulled fortune cards first, by the way. One more turn? There you go. I am rolling for her horror check. She's still a D8. She makes it. All right. I'm rolling for his horror check. D6. He does not make it. By he, you mean? Uh, Archer. Okay. All right. High anxiety. Shift your health die down. That's not good. It cannot lower below D6, so it doesn't matter. He was already down D6. All right, right, so that's good. Oh, I never did roll to try to get rid of one of his cards at the end. No. 
I forgot he had that can't move thing. Yeah, I didn't roll for my health either. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah, I had health on both of mine. Six. I should have rolled. Didn't make it anyway. Oh, are we going to well, do that's it? Well, that's not me that's wounded. Are we going to do it? What? Yeah, because we okay. should have done it. All right. Singapore? Yep. Lowell? Yep. All right. All right. Singapore's good. Lowell goes back down because of this card. Because that's the very last thing of the turn. Can I roll for getting rid of a yeah. thing? Unless you already did. No, I didn't. That was for real health. That was for wounds. Yeah. This is for horror. Good. I'm going to get rid of the one where you can't move. The Peril of the Fog. All right. Two finesse or cunning. Finesse, better. That's 3d10. No. She does not make it. Takes two hits. Takes one hit. He's in the fog to start. Okay, what I'll do. One cunning. He has 2d6. Ah, he makes it. All right. He can now go, but he's going to be in that same boat. So he's here, mm -hmm. but he has to do one more peril for having moved, for having run. <sighs> Two with cunning. Can he even do that? Nope. He takes two hits and fails. But he makes them. Alright, I'm uh I'm gonna try to like I said to get across this boat. Okay. Um, I'm in the fog, so I gotta roll for that. I gotta do a scenario card first. Peril, glowing fog. Okay, well that's not gonna change anything. I'm already in the fog. And you're already fine because you can ignore the That's right, I'll ignore the fog peril yeah. anyway. I can get here in six. Do I stay there? I think what I'm gonna do is stay there. Mm -hmm. And I think I'm gonna shoot. So if you could roll, he's gonna have to dodge. So roll 2d6 for him, for the critter, and I'm gonna roll uh, I have two hits. He does not dodge. So he gets hit for two, so he has to make, he has to roll two d6s, and if he passes either, or fails either, he's gone. He's gone. He's gone. He's gone. One less critter. So the critters get to move. Yep, and one's going to be base um, to base with me, I suspect. Yeah, I don't have a way of stopping him anymore. Let me see. Let me see if there's anything I can do. That one does not get to you. Fog is pretty much everywhere in the table now. I have when enemy character moves into contact with one of my characters, I can push him an inch away. All right. So. So that's good because that'll stop him from brawling. Right. Maybe I can shoot him. Uh, that's the end of turn six. We get the extra turn we got, uh, so we each get to pull a fortune card. Fog closes, so now everything's in fog. You have the uh, you're the director. First thing you need to do then, once you decide you're activating somebody, is she has to pull her scenario card. Nearest the center of the table encounters a random peril. That's probably me. Actually, it is. You're definitely closer. A three might finesse or cunning. That sucks. You could ignore it. It's your first peril. That's true. I'm going to ignore it. Ignore that one. I have to do three perils to get that thing, don't I? You've got activating in the fog. Right. Then you've got... The perilous area by the And you've got the, the peril and then the plot point. Probably. Roll three successes with any skill. That sucks. At least it's any skill. At least it is. All right, finesse. Come on. Yes! Got it. All right, so Got you made it. the first one. Mm, now, okay, this is the peril. All right, two with cunning. Let me see what this other thing says, my reward. Wait a minute. I can re-roll a cunning. D10. Come on. Yes, I got that one. Good. All right, one more. Last one. This is for the plot. One with finesse. All right. 3d10. Yes. All right. So d8. All right. Six. That sucks. That's exactly not the direction For we what? wanted. Oh. Then, I mean, I can walk six and then brawl. So first I got to get out of the fog. Two with finesse. I don't even know if I have two finesse. Mm, two d6. This is going to be bad. I can drop a fortune card and re-roll. I need two finesse, but I can re-roll one if I drop a fortune card. And I'm not, doesn't matter because it's not going to happen. They're both down. So he fails. He can't even get out of the fog. 
There's no reason to continue the game. Even if the creatures shake us down, it doesn't affect anything in the way this game plays. No. Um, and we cannot get the no. plot point. It would take me, if I can even get there, if I'm even within 12, um, I won't have an action. The only way we could beat this is if we have one more turn. I think we could do it if we have one more turn. That was close. If we had one more turn, I think we would have pulled it off. We were very, very close to being able to take that final plot point and thereby ending this adventure. Uh, in the future, we will be doing Perilous Island. I have run Perilous Island before, not in its completion. The last two scenarios I didn't end up uh, running for the previous campaign, and that was on the blog anyway, and not here on uh, the channel. So if you have any questions about the China Station campaign or about Pulp Alley, uh, please put those in the comments down below. Also, if you have any further ideas of content you'd be interested in seeing here on Cry Havoc Wargaming, we look for that in the comments down below as well. If you've enjoyed this video or found it of any use, I hope that you will hit like. And if you'd like to continue to receive notifications for videos like this one that may help you better decide how to spend your money and your time in your tabletop wargaming hobby, then please hit subscribe and ring our notification bell. Until next time, cheers.